let us just do that as an example also ok. So, let us take this case Zero, six, two, seven. Okay. So now here, what's happened is you have co the column player has three, uh, three pure strategies. So if I want, if uh, so earlier you had just two pure strategies. So you had Z one, Z two. You could write Z two in Z terms of Z one or Z one in terms of Z two, and you could plot with respect to one of them. Right, and so you could plot a unidimensional plot. Now you have Z1, Z2, Z3, and if you want to plot, uh, even if you eliminate one, you will need, you will still have two variables for the other. So you will need a two-dimensional plot. Okay, so there is some still some trick you could use in some cases. Okay, so let's try to let's try to see how that can uh, how that can be used here. Hmm. Uh, so let's first first we'll start with the uh, with the row player because he has two strategies. Okay, the row player has two strategies. So, what we will plot? So, start with y2 equal to 0, y2 equal to 1, y1 equal to 1, y1 equal to 0. Okay, and let us start, uh, let us plot max over j y transpose aj. Okay, so let us take j equal to 1 first. So, that means column 1. So, column I need to mark this, this is starting from say 0 here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, ok. Uh, for column 1 that means you have, so you start from uh, y2 equal to 0. So, this is y1, this is y2, ok. So, y2 equal to 0, which means that you are starting at value 1 and increasing to 6, right, ok. So, so from 1 to 6, j equal to 1, ok. Now, let us take, uh, let us take j equal to 2 j equal to 2, this will start from um, again y 1 equal to 1, which means uh, which means 3 and decreasing to 2. So, you start from here and end somewhere, somewhere here. Okay, and the last guy is going to start from zero and end at seven. Okay, this is for j equal to three. Now, what is the uh, max over j? What is the upper the upper envelope? It's going to be this this and this right this is the max over j so the red the red region here is is the max over j of y transpose aj okay and now what is the min over y of this min over y of this is is this one ok. So, and can someone tell me what is the what are the values here. So, it is the it will have uh, j equal to 1 and it is the intersection of j equal to the j equal to 1 line and the j equal to uh, 2 line right. So, j equal to 1 line and j equal to 2 line at least that as per my drawing. So, can, can you calculate? Yeah, it is 1 by 3, 2 by 3, right. So, uh, so sorry, 2 by 3 I think for y 1, right, if I am y 1 equal to 2 by 3, ok. So, you should get, so this is y star, 
which is y1 equal to 2 by 3 and y2 equal to 1 by 3. 2 yeah and 1 yes. So, we so we got our security strategy for the rope layer. So, that is equal to 2 third and 1 third. Now, what do we do for the column player? As I said the column player you would now have z1, z2, z3 here right. You would have z1, z2, z3 for the column player. Now, we what do we do about him because, but how do we use the height? Okay, and but that to remember that is like saying ki you are just looking for a best response. There will be many such z's that will give you the same value of y transpose uh, y transpose z, y star transpose z. There is something in this picture actually which you can use. So, see what are we plotting here? We are plotting here the payoffs that the that the column player would get or any player would get ok as as the column player changes his pure strategy. So, if the column player was playing j equal to 1 with pure strategy which is the first column this was this line the line was this one right. If the column player shifted to 2 then it was it became this line. If the column player shifted to 3 it became this line right. Now, the column player is trying to maximize ok. So, if he plays 3 in response to y star, what does what would he get? What is the value he would get in if he plays 3 to in response to y star? He would get this smaller height sub height this height from here till here right. So, he would get basically if he plays 3 he would get just this height clear. Now, if he plays 3 in combination with uh, let us say in combination with 2 ok uh, 3 in combination with 2 he would get so, uh, what would he get in response to y star. So, if he plays 3 he gets this height if he plays 2 what would he get? He would get this this whole height right. If he plays 1 he would get again this whole height which means what? He should not play 3 at all right which means 3 is actually giving even a slight positive weight to 3 is suboptimal for him. So, it is so the row player by playing y star has made the column player indifferent between 1 and 2 and now the column player has to choose between 1 and 2 and he has to choose a do a randomization between 1 and 2. So, in other words what you have to do is effectively although z 3 is there in the problem you can take z 3 to be 0 in the because that is good the nature of the best response it will always put z 3 equal to 0 and then you can draw basically the corresponding one between for z 1 and z 2. Now, you have just two strategies for the uh, for the column player and proceed as before and you will get you will get your z 1 star you will. So, you will have to plot here again the uh, let us just do it for completeness sake. So, so again z 2 equal to 0 here and z 1 z 2 equal to 1 this is z 1 equal to 1 and z 1 equal to 0. 0 Let us plot this. So, can you tell me what is a z i for each i? So, I am taking y. So, I take i equal to 1 and z 3 has been taken as 0 yeah, as a function of. So, tell me what what would it be? So, for i equal to 1 which means you are looking at this row here and see since z 3 is 0 this is this is this is to be ignored. So, it is you have only these two ok. So, you start from 1 ok and end at 3. Ok, so you have start from 1 and end at 3. Okay. 
In the other case, you start at 6 and end at 2. And again, your lower envelope is now this one. And what you want to, your Z star is this. Can someone calculate and confirm? What is that? So, what is Z1 is what? Z1 is 1 by 6 and uh, Z2 is 5 by 6. Can you check if this is, uh, this gives you the same height here? Okay. So, this value here is 16, this height is 16 by 6. Okay. It's something between 2 and 3, I can see that. Okay. So, 16 by 6 and that is the value here also. Now, you can do this uh, whenever one player has two strategies, the other player may have any number of strategies. What will happen is generically you will have since th this is coming to see. So, what happens here is if you see y star, y star is generically will be formed by the intersection of two lines. There will be a few coincidences when there will be multiple lines passing through that same point. But y star will usually get defined by two lines. So they, you know, you could have a case where there is a third line passing exactly through this, through this, in which case you are you are kind of stuck. But otherwise, it, if it's formed by the intersection of two lines, all other strategies except for those two are being are basically suboptimal for the player, and they are to be eliminated. Not necessarily, may not be may not be a unique security strategy. Yeah. Uh, so, if all three pass through the same point, then you have to basically explore the whole, that, the three dimensional space. So, in fact, the lack of a unique security strategy could, could be for other reasons also. See, for instance, it could happen that, you know, the, there is a, there could happen, the shape of this could be that there is a plateau somewhere, in which case there could be multiple security strategies, that could very well happen. Okay. So, anyway, this is in two dimensions, it is these things, these kind of things have, would not happen that uh, that easily or except in you know very contrived cases. But, but the point is that generically what you will have is that this point is defined by the intersection of two of these lines. So, you limit yourself to only those. Now, that just as a point of caution, that does not mean that, so just the way we eliminated j equal to 3 here, okay, we eliminated it because it, it gave a lower value than these, these two for y star for the when the row player played y star that does not mean that j equal to 3 was dominated okay so in particular if you see this part here j equal to 3 is actually better okay so there is some strategy where j equal to 3 is better so it can, could not have been eliminated through a you know some kind of a domination argument okay it has, it is, it is just not a, a, a best response to Y star, that is it. And that is why it is being eliminated. Okay. So, it is not being eliminated in the, in the, in the, in the sense that it is not being removed from the game. We are just eliminating it in our calculation in finding the Z star. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, Two equations in three variables, yes. As far as if you, if the only equation you are trying to solve is y, so if you wrote out this, right? So you wrote y star, y star transpose a z equal to, you know, let's call this height h, equal to h. You will have three multiple variables here, solving this. But that is not what we are solving for. We want to do the max min. You will have to do max min over z. See, the point is you will still have all three z1, z2, z3 or at least two of them which is z1 and z2 when you are doing min over z of, see how, how did we find this part, this one here, we did max over z of min over y, right. So, when we did this part, right, that is what we were doing. So, here in doing this, we eliminated z3. 
now you will you if, if if there are three lines passing through the same point all you will have both uh, you know z1 and z2 you will have to plot this in a three dimensional sort of a plot like this here z2 z1 then try to plot something etc so that would be the only uh, only job. see in general what is this the, you I, as i told you once you go to higher uh, higher number of strategies and dimensions the min max theorem is basically linear programming duality so it is as good as having to solve a linear program okay so if you 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 don't expect it to be much easier than that uh, in general okay now can someone tell me what a what would a picture with i just said that j3 is not to be uh, j3 is not dominated here but if it was dominated how would the picture look yeah right so if j j equal to 3 was dominated the picture would look like something like this that you would have so you have your j equal to 2 you have j equal to 1 okay and now j equal to 3 was suppose dominated by j equal to 1 this is j equal to 1 j equal to 2 if j equal to 3 was dominated by j equal to 1 it could be something like this which means regardless of what the row player plays j equal to 3 is worse for the column player than playing j equal to 1 okay so that means it's always below this doesn't have to be parallel or anything just below that's it okay if it is dominated by both 1 and 2 then in that case in that case it would be something like this so j equal to 3 clear It could be a, uh, dominated by a mixed combination also, that is also possible. So, in fact, uh, I have not talked of domination in mixed strategies, ok. So, it could be dominated by a mixed combination, that is possible. Uh, not necessary, you know, because it is uniformly, you know, it has to be for every strategy of the other way. So, that 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 is a little more. So, domination in mixed will have to be, uh, we will have to try, we will have to write that out carefully, ok. Ok. And as the final point, uh, yeah, we have all the other uh, properties that we said you, we have for saddle points in pure strategies. We have, now that there is a saddle point, we know there is always a saddle point in mixed strategies. We always, we have these properties such as, for example, that so, uh, every saddle point has the same value. Uh, we have that uh, if y1, z1 and y2, z2 are saddle points then so are y1 z2 and y2 z1 so this interchangeability property also and like i said before that every saddle point Okay, so 
all of these properties that we used uh, so we actually used the last one that you know to find a saddle point and the value it suffices to just find security strategies and that's how we just wrote, we just went about finding the min max and the max min by drawing those two those two figures so now as we move to non zero sum games yeah, i here's a here's something that uh, here's a counterintuitive example of the kind of things that could happen in a non zero sum game okay now the zero sum game because the reason everything could be reduced to saddle points or security uh, type of thinking was because we uh, the damage anything that the other player does was damage to you right there was just no way for gain for one player to be not gain for the other, uh, for, uh, for for to be also gain for the other player okay now as a result of this uh, you know this this kind of analysis becomes very easy now here's an example of a non zero sum game and let's see i'll just show you what happens in this okay so suppose so you have two uh, players and two strategies up down for the for player one this is player one up this is for player two and left right for player two okay the let's take both players are maximizing okay both players maximizing the payoffs are like this so payoffs are one three four one zero two and 3 4 okay now what is the solution of this is there anything is there any uh, dominance here they both are maximizing so u u dominates u dominates d right u dominates d for for player 1 okay so u dominates d so uh, so and in fact also you can uh, then after that you can eliminate uh, so you can eliminate d and then eliminate r and you find that ul is the ul is the only nash equilibrium okay so ul is the only nash equilibrium and in once ul is the nash equilibrium player 1 gets uh, player 1 gets uh, what uh, he gets 1 player 1 gets 1 and player 2 gets 3 in this okay now suppose let's take a hypothetical situation suppose player 1 decides that i'm going to do damage to myself okay so player 1 actually reduces his payoff from his equilibrium strategy okay the dominated the dominant equilibrium strategy he reduces his payoff and reduces it by uh, say 2 okay so now the payoff becomes the new payoff matrix now becomes this so player 1 goes and does damage to himself by 2 units whenever he is going to do he is going to play u okay so he 1 becomes minus 1 4 becomes 2 the other things remain the same now what happens so now now d dominates u and l l after elimination l dominate uh, l is dominated by r okay and what you are left with now dr becomes the equilibrium okay and and in this case by you know by doing this kind of self inflicted harm to himself in u what has he got effectively in the new game player 1 has now got player 1 has now got 3 and player 2 has got 4 player 1 has actually become better off so this the, this is not a model as a part of a strategy okay to do this kind of harm but this is essentially what i'm what is this pointing out this is pointing out that the outcomes of a non zero sum game can change very dramatically when you change certain certain numbers so a player can actually his payoff from his winning or Nash dominant uh, Nash equilibrium strategy, if it reduces in the new game, the resulting game, he might actually end up being better off. Okay, so it can happen that you know what is on the face of it seems like damage to you, 
might actually end up being better for you in the in the in the resulting new game okay so this is the reason for this is is the non zero sum nature of this uh, of uh, the non zero sum nature of this problem essentially okay because yeah yeah this uh, it, this cost by sort of reasoning which can go beyond nash equilibrium even for player one right okay what do you mean because we know that the other player is rational so if he plays d he's going to get three. Yeah. No, no, no. That's okay. But but you mean you which cost do you mean the second one or the first one? No, I mean D R is achievable in the first one without any extra No, it is. It is achieve. But D R is. But he the, uh, for for the role player, U D U is play, playing. U D is U is better than D. No, no, he is maximizing, they are maximizing, no, no, maximizing, no, so he, u is better, 4 is better than 3, 1 is better than 0. Okay, I mean, sorry, I assume the first he plays and then the other. No, no, this yeah. is. So, this is in exchange of information. No, it is not just about the exchange of information, the point is there is a nonlinear, very uh, highly dramatic changes and highly nonlinear changes that happen when you change, uh, when you change, you know, in, if to, an, uh, to uh, the outcome of a game like this, okay. So, what might seem like uh, like damage on the face of it can actually end up being better for you, uh, better for the player at the end. In fact, better for both players also in this case, okay.